Paul's story plays out much like many that I've seen before in the emergency room. He was doing a job that he'd done countless times before and out of convenience and complacency, did not put on any safety glasses. I was cutting a piece of small trim quarter round and on a miter saw and a piece chip and flew up and hit me in the eye. I did not have my safety glasses on. I had gotten comfortable working without safety glasses, which was the wrong thing to do. Wear your safety glasses at all times. The injury happened a number of months ago with a couple of surgeries prior. As Paul is about to go into the operating room, he tells us exactly what he can currently see out of that left eye. No vision at all. The operating room is a very busy place with machines and people all over. This room is made more busy with microscopes and fine instruments necessary to work on the fine structures of the eye. Imagine that your entire operating field is about the size of a grate with stitches so fine that they are difficult to see even with magnification. As Paul entered the operating room, the first steps were to give him medication so that he would sleep through the procedure. Afterwards, the field was prepped and some injections were placed in Paul's left eye. After this, incredibly small ports were placed in his eye so they could access the inside with small lights and instruments. Then came the hard part. Dr. Stone and his fellow Dr. Lee spent nearly an hour assessing the damage, removing scar tissue, getting the retina in its best position, and then reattaching it to the back of the eye. The retina is key. It's the part of the eye that allows us to see. And if it's not attached to the back of the eye, functional vision isn't possible. In this case, Paul's retina was detached and scarred into the shape of a cone with one firm attachment on the back. In the OR, it looked like a flower or a sea fan that was attached to the base, but the top was wrinkled and floating in the middle of the eye. The retina was incredibly scarred down and it was fully detached and was stuck to a lot of different parts of the eye, so I had to break up all those areas and then uh, reattach the retina and flatten it back up and just flatten it. So it's retina's reattached? Retina's reattached. I have to do a few maneuvers to keep it there, but, but the hard part's hard part stuff. With overall success in the operating room, Paul was sent home to recover. Dr. Stone sat down to summarize the case. Yeah, Mr. Gardner's case was complicated for a lot of reasons. One is that it was initiated by a severe injury to his eye, severe trauma, and that led to eye problems in the front of his eye and his cornea, which made the view difficult into the back. Of course, he had also had previous retina surgery elsewhere and he had a very, very severe retinal detachment. We see cases like this probably about twice a year. It represents a, a, a small minority of even a retinal detachment cases. So it's very, they're very challenging to fix. There's a lot of scar tissue buildup. The good news is during the case, I was able to see what I needed to see and I was able to successfully reattach the retina. So we're very happy about that. The thing that we find with cases like this is that we, it takes time. Um, the eye is very sick uh, initially when we get it and the healing process is a process that can, that can take weeks, months, sometimes even longer, uh, in, into a year or two. But a first order business is getting the retina back to your past and I'm very happy that we were going to do that. About a month later, I caught up to Paul Gardner during his follow-up appointment at Retina Associates of Kentucky. The lights of our camera were quite bright and his eyes are still very sensitive. Thus, he kept his eyes closed during the interview. Though he's making progress, he has a long road ahead. He told us about his eye on this particular day. Uh, some squiggly lights, the hand movement in front of my eye, and light. It takes time. The goal of Paul's vision is to get him where he can have what we call ambulatory vision out of that eye, where he may not be able to use it to read or drive but that he sees something out of his side fairly well, that he can recognize shapes and, and things like that. You know, if you're driving, you want to be able to see something out to the side or, you know, it, it, there's some safety issues with that. Um, and just generally some usable vision that supplements his, his, his other eye, which sees much, much better. It's basically from here on out, assuming everything stays where it is and so far so good, the plan would be to get some glasses or some lens or some focusing on that eye in some way. And sometimes we can do that with glasses. Sometimes that's a, a minor surgical procedure. And we basically just have to see how he does over time to determine what the next step is. If Paul could go back to the day in his shop, things would be very different because he knows now the risks associated with common and mundane activities. He also has a message for each of you that may be thinking about doing some work in the shop 
at work, outdoors, or wherever it may be. Wear your safety glasses at all times. Just be careful with your eyes. They're very important protect them at all times. Eye trauma is a huge issue and as you can see the operating room is abuzz with work to help this man maintain and keep the best sight possible. I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton and this is Stanton MD. It's integral that anytime you're working with tools whether outside or in the shop you need to make sure that you use eye protection to protect that vision. More Stanton MD right after this.